So I've started labeling this panel and it's kind of occurred to me that you might not understand what I'm talking about when I say shore power. So when I say the 30 amp power comes into here, into this 30 amp breaker, um, I'll show you what that means. So I'm sitting in the back of the van, <laughs> just outside, around the back here. We have an RV plug Whoop. that we've installed here. And this is called a smart plug. I put it way down here in this lower rear quarter panel because underneath here at the back, there's a little plastic access panel that I could pop off and get to the back of this spot. So it was really convenient to put this down low. Uh, the driver's side would be considered the, the service side when you're camping at a campsite. So this is on the service side, down low, kind of inconspicuous. These smart plugs are um, an upgrade from your standard RV plug. Uh, they're a little heavier duty. They lock in nicely instead of having the ring that you have to turn. Um, they make uh, positive contact and there's uh, really good um, test results on these. So when you buy it, you buy the receptacle and the plug end and you have to put it on your own cord. So I purchased a 50 foot cord I actually caught, cut about uh, 20 feet off of it uh, to make it a 30 foot cord. And then I used the this wire on the inside and I'll show you how, uh, how I ran that. But basically from here, it goes up inside. So I'm just gonna plug this back in. So it's just plug in and these two clips um, hook, hook, lock it in place. So that's what's been powering the van for um, construction, for any anytime we need power inside for a vacuum or whatever. It also uh, has been running the heat. Um, it, the, the eventually the heat will be run by diesel, but as a backup, or when you are able to hook up to shore power, you can you can heat the van uh, with a backup uh, electric heater. So let's uh, just show you the whole path. So going from here, the power comes into the van. Oh, it'll take a second. So it comes into the van through the side down here, through that panel that I was saying is uh, removable, and then comes in through this orange cord and into this box. Um, it's hard to see, but in behind, this is the electrical distribution box. Buried in behind here is a electro electrical management system. Its job is to make sure that we've got good power coming from the supply. Uh, meaning it's the the right polarity that if there's a spike it um, it filters out the spike and so it's right now doing its test to make sure that the power coming in is good that's why we haven't got lights on yet from the EMS the power comes in through this orange cable which is a piece of that extra cable that I cut off and goes into that 30 amp breaker the e EMS reports to this little box and right now it's saying it's a, a zero amp draw 60 hertz zero errors and 122 volts so in a second that will say the power is good enough and it'll uh, click and then it'll send power into that um, that 30 amp breaker that we look that we started looking at So when we're hooked up to shore power, power is coming in through this 30 amp breaker. I needed another breaker because I needed another terminal. So it comes into this bus bar on this side. This panel is split in half uh, as an RV panel. It's, it's set up for a 50 amp uh, service, which would have two service legs. Uh, all I've done is I've split those service legs this uh, ground bar was one. I split the ground bar, I split the neutral bar at the back there. So I've, I'm treating the panel as two separate panels. So from here over is the shore power side of the panel and from here over is the inverter side of the panel. Um, so when we're plugged in, power is coming in through here, across the bus bar, out through here, and goes into the inverter. And the inverter, when you're plugged in, mostly works as a pass-through um, but it also checks the power make sure that we're not drawing too much power and if we need to add so um, 
we'll talk about this a little bit later, but this multi plus can limit the amount of power that it's drawing. So right now I say we have a 30 amp breaker here and we have a, a 30 amp plug at the house. But if you were say boondocking or mooch docking in somebody's driveway and they only had a 15 amp power, uh, plug for you to plug into, um, the multi plus would make sure that you do not draw uh, more than 15 amps. So there's a setting on it uh, that you can set and it will limit its draw. You can still run things that are more than 30 amps because it will take the different, the, the, uh, it'll draw its additional power from the batteries and provide up to 50 amps. So the inverter actually has two jobs. It's a charger and an inverter. Um, right now I've got it pushed down uh, because we're plugged into shore power, we don't need to have the inverter running. So it's on charger only. Um, and what it's doing is it's taking shore power, it's passing it through and allowing the lights to be on, uh, but it's also charging the batteries. Uh, so we've got these huge um, four aught cables that come off the bottom here. There's a panel that is just being printed or uh, paint, painted that goes here. Uh, but the uh, power goes through these 4 aught cables into the Lynx distributor, which is basically a fancy bus bar. There's a positive and a negative bus bar in here. Um, so the red and black cables go into uh, the bus bar and there's a, a fuse in here to protect the, uh, the equipment. And so all the charging methods, the Orion um, for alternator charger, the MPT for solar charging, they all lead into this Lynx distributor and the Lynx distributor is hooked up to the batteries. Now, the way this works is the bus bar comes across. Is this screwed on? Yeah, it's screwed on. There's a, an end, a positive and negative end that stick out the end of the Lynx distributor. I didn't want those exposed. I didn't want somebody to be able to touch them. So they're in behind this little panel that I've built. Um, and then in behind this panel, the wire for the positive, for example, the positive goes through there, comes up to the back side of this switch. And then when the switch is in the on position, passes right through, and we'll look at the top of that in a second. Um, before we do that, the negative, which travels on the bottom here, it travels through and it hooks up to the uh, shunt, which is on the back side of this. All the all the uh, pieces with exposed um, connectors I've, I've kind of hidden inside this box. So the uh, shunt has the negative, the chassis ground also runs out, out from the shunt and over to, uh, over to the wheel well over here. Ah, there's a, a nut down at the bottom there. That's the, uh, the ground, the chassis ground. Um, but the, the shunt measures incoming and outgoing current and reports, and that's how we can determine how much power we have left in our batteries. So the, <clears throat> this will be the main battery disconnect here, and the batteries will be in this tray here. There's one right now, but there will eventually be three batteries in here. Uh, we're just making a sliding panel that will fit over top of this to, uh, to keep stuff from falling in on top of the batteries. But the, let's see if I can get in here. You can see the, the back of the switch and down further that flashing blue light is the smart shunt. And those connections are made and the, the power travels through this wall. Just get back up here. So out uh, into the switch here, out of the switch here, Actually, it goes the other way, but this is a uh, another fuse. This is a type T fuse, and it's the, oh my God, everything's gone wrong fuse. If it blows, you've got problems. Um, but that's the uh, the last uh, first line, a first line of defense right here from a dead short. Um, but all the, uh, the battery connections will be back here. So this little black box is the BMS. It's connected to the batteries through these black leads and the black leads are providing information on the state of charge of each individual cell and the temperature of the battery. 
And if the BMS detects, it's, uh, it's kind of like a traffic cop. If it detects a problem, it has the ability to shut down the charging of the batteries or the discharging of the battery through the load disconnect. So basically, it's the traffic cop and it has to be able to take control of all this other equipment. So let me just scoot down here. So the uh, loads coming out of the battery, um, anything that's connected to this distribution box, needs to be shut off if the battery voltage gets too low. And the way that works is the BMS shuts down this relay back here that's called the 12 volt load disconnect. So it's kind of a, it's operates like a relay. That yellow line that's leading to it comes straight from the BMS. And when 12 volts is cut off from the, from the BMS, it opens that relay and shuts off power to this. Uh, so that's taking care of loads coming out of the battery. Charge uh, can also be disconnected separately by the BMS. And it's done in uh, one of three different ways. The solar charge controller, it can be shut off in the same way that the um, loads are shut off by a separate little disconnect that's back in there. It's actually not hooked up right now, but we don't have any solar panels uh, hooked up either. But the BMS has the ability to control that relay, which shuts off charging from the uh, MPPT controller. The uh, MultiPlus can be shut off through a, a Ethernet cable that leads from the BMS, and it can uh, tell it to to, to close its uh, or shut off its charging. The the way this Orion uh, works is it um, is connected up front uh, underneath the driver's seat to the uh, main circuit board and so it's got a 60 amp breaker at that end it uh, runs through this um, black line here there's uh, two uh, six uh, AWG cables and another little line that uh, is hooked up to an ignition source so they run all the way up to the front here and go uh, via, <laughs> there's a, another 60 amp fuse here, um, but that's really, I'm just using that as a connection point. Um, and then the power comes into, through this red line here, um, positive and negative. These are straight from underneath the driver's seat. Uh, this, um, the output from here going to the, um, the Lynx distributor um, is controlled by this little red wire. So this little red wire is connected to the ignition source through this relay. So as long as the BMS says that it's okay to charge, this relay is closed, the little green light's on, and when the engine is started, this red light, this red line gets 12 volts and this thing will turn on. Um, when it shuts when the engine shuts off this uh, charging will shut off so it's controlled by both the ignition and by the bms through the uh, through this relay